What's going on internet? IG back again today in 2019 and we're looking finally the final release and review of Linux Mint 19.1. I'm going to make a concerted effort in this video to make this uh, as quick and to the point as possible because if you've been following my channel for the last couple of months I've spent a fair bit of time with Linux Mint and it's starting to feel a little bit like favoritism but honestly there's there's so much that this desktop is doing right that uh, that I do want to take the time to actually give it it's it's fair time in the sun. I think for me personally I have not used Linux Mint a whole lot in the last few years and coming especially to Linux Mint 19.1, it's the final feather in the cap for uh, what is a very, very feature complete desktop. In fact, I would argue that Linux Mint 19.1 is probably one of the most feature complete desktop operating systems that you can get, period. And here's what I mean by that. Um, obviously, I think KDE and the Plasma desktop still has more features enabled uh, or, or at least accessible to the user out of the box but cinnamon does and linux mint as the flagship os that ships cinnamon seems to be able to do a wonderful job of providing a really simple and easily understood uh, user interface user experience but at the same time giving you all the power robust tools customization that you could possibly want so first of all, robust feature set. So I mentioned that I think Linux Mint is feature complete. Now, what I mean by that is that all of the key features that you would expect to see in an operating system to be able to keep uh, your operating system up and running healthy without, uh, with minimal in intervention by the end user. Um, these are the tools that Linux Mint has focused on and really given a lot of time uh, to. For example, we all know that Linux Mint has one of the most robust update manager tools uh, in Linux and possibly the rest of the OS world as well. Uh, just the amount of customization you can do here, the amount of uh, what, how often you want updates to come through, whether you want certain packages withheld, um, if you want to auto apply the different priority levels of updates. Um, and they've scaled that up again by being able to uh, show you what kernels are available and what kernels are installed on your system. This is all in an effort to be able to give the user much better control with graphical tools over their system. Also, they have a really robust backup tool that they debuted in the last couple of releases. They've obviously got their original backup tool, Mint Backup, which has the uh, personal data backing up and your software selection backing up. But they also have system snapshots now by utilizing TimeShift. And they've really put a lot of time and effort into using TimeShift as, uh, as this tool will probably be a game changer and, uh, and an excellent uh, save your butt type of tool for a lot of Linux users. Again, it's really simple to get your head around, but the difference that this makes is uh, akin to what uh, Time Machine did for Mac users. It sort of separates you from having to worry about backing up your system because it's just that visible. Now, when it comes to customization, again, really robust tool set here. Cinnamon gives you a lot of fantastic options to be able to customize the way that your desktop looks, but without going overboard. Now, as per usual for a Linux Mint release, they give you some fantastic wallpapers, but boo halley, wallpapers are one thing. The theme customization in Linux Mint is such that it is simple. Uh, you do have different options in terms of uh, whether you wanna use a light, dark or darker theme. Um, you can change the uh, icon colors, but most of it just revolves around the colors. The Mint Y theme, in my in my opinion, is minimal enough that it's not going to offend anyone. Uh, but the customization that they give you with colors, I think, is a nice accent. Uh, so again, a robust customization doesn't just uh, stop with appearance. When it comes to the actual OS stuff and the desktop environment stuff, when it comes to, uh, for example, applets that you can install to your Cinnamon desktop, there are so many applets to choose from when it comes to expanding the functionality of your Linux Mint desktop. It's, uh, it's actually amazing. Like a Pomodoro timer, if you wanna have a quick 25 minute timer chilling down on your taskbar, it's very easy. It's a one click install to get that and to plonk it anywhere on your panel. The same then also applies for desklets, which are basically desktop widgets. Again, download whatever you want and you expand the functionality of your desktop. Again, this isn't bombarding the user with a bunch of crazy tools and options that 
could baffle the user, it, but it tucks away all of these uh, expanded functionality so it's available for those people that want it. Uh, so again, same thing can be done here for desktop extensions, where if you want to make your desktop function in a different way, uh, especially in regards to transitioning between uh, workspaces and that kind of thing, you've got a few different ones to choose from there as well. Um, and again, the, the customization kind of um, goes on here. And in terms of accessibility uh, and the amount of time and attention they give to non, uh, what's the word, non-Western markets when it comes to input methods and language support, um, this is really important. If a, if a Linux distribution or Linux project is going to be considered global, it has to be able to have really strong support for uh, input languages other than Western, uh, Western style um, languages. So it's really great to see that Cinnamon makes this a priority and the Linux Mint team make this kind of accessibility a priority. And that's what I mean by sort of feature complete, robust tools, all of that kind of thing is uh, this is all stuff that when you dig a little bit deeper with Mint, these are the tools that you get compared to a lot of other derivative distributions that are just kind of, uh, you know, slapped together by a few people. Also, again, that robust tool selection extends to software. So when it comes to the software that Linux Mint has available at its disposal, uh, the, it obviously has everything that Ubuntu inherits in terms of a vast repository of software, but it also has Flatpak integration they're ready to go out of the box, sorted in the software manager with uh, ratings and reviews. This is huge um, and for a lot of different reasons, but the fact that we can get up-to-date software delivered through the form of Flatpak by default without having to enable or tick any boxes or anything uh, in Linux Mint is a huge boon for just the, having up-to-date software and being able to run up-to-date software. Now, again, I think if we wanted to take this a step further, it'd be great to see some categorization of some of these Flatpak uh, apps, but the fact that they're here and I can easily install and remove them without having to enable or disable anything by default out of the box is is a huge win. The other thing that uh, it, that has come into focus with this uh, with this most recent release is uh, Nemo, the default file manager. Again, continuing with that theme, uh, Nemo has become one of the most robust file managers out there. Of course, I still think Dolphin is the best file manager just under the sun in general, but Nemo has a expanding set of uh, of tools and tweaks that you can use with it. And uh, and just a simple thing that a lot of desktops don't do, including GNOME by default, is being able to customize the, the color of your folders. Again, this is a very small thing, um, but for uh, for a usability thing of being able to just quickly identify where which folders are which, again, this feature is inherent in the fact that you can change the overall color of every single file and folder and icon in the system anyway. But the fact that they've just included this is a really nice touch. And you can just come in here and customize what color folder you want. Um, again, this is, this is a very surface level thing, but in terms of uh, what this file manager is capable of, and especially the speed improvements that it's been given in, uh, in Linux Mint 19.1 is really encouraging. They have enough features here to satisfy traditional users, and they also have uh, enough simplicity that new users aren't baffled by what's going on. Okay, so uh, the, the final thing that I wanna to touch on is theming and layouts. Again, this is, uh, this is something that GTK-based desktops haven't always done well, in my opinion, in terms of uh, having everything symmetrically laid out, having things uh, make logical sense in terms of where they're placed, and Cinnamon is one of those desktops that just makes sense from what most people are used to. What do I mean by that? Well, everything is laid out. Notice the amazing amount of symmetry and grid alignment that they've got going on here. They don't have a bunch of white space that's just dead. Uh, they've got window controls in the top uh, in the top right where you have the close, maximize, minimize in the order that they should be. But you can change all of those things if you want as well. The default layout of a lot of uh, the work that they have been putting into, especially their welcome screen and other updated, uh, I guess, uh, X dialogues with the tabs on the left hand side here. Uh, just all of this is such simple design, but it's effective and it makes it feel a lot more timeless than maybe some of the, the more trendy design trends that end up, uh, <laughs> they end up ticking off a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of productive desktop users. 
All right, so up until this point, I've been pretty gushy with Linux Mint. So now I'm gonna round out the video by talking about some things that detract me personally from using Linux Mint and some of the things that you could do to remedy some of these things. Okay, so first of all, uh, Linux Mint, the way that the LTS release is structured is that it is based off an LTS uh, Ubuntu release and they build each of their subsequent releases, their point releases off of that. So that means effectively you're running the same software base and kernel and everything else from an OS that is already almost a year old uh, so that inherently has its problems uh, you've got a very old kernel out of the box you've got very old software now this is remedied by the fact that uh, the software manager supports flat packs out of the box like I mentioned before so you can get more up-to-date software for the apps that it counts for me personally this would be evidence in the form of Caden live uh, the video editor that comes in the repositories of Ubuntu is a little bit older than the one that is available on Flathub. Also, uh, the same would be said for GIMP. GIMP out of the box here uh, from the Ubuntu repositories is still version 2.8, which makes zero sense, but the one available on Flatpak is 2.10.8. So again, this is one of those things that makes a lot more sense uh, and why I'm grateful that Flatpak is there. Now, when it comes to kernels, again, this is one of those things where uh, you can kind of take two, you can take two different approaches to how you manage your kernels. The fact that Linux Mint 19.1 has now got a feature where you can um, manage the kernel straight out of the box with the tools that they have presented with you already uh, is a great step forward. And, uh, and honestly, the fact that, that you can install uh, the Linux kernel 4.18 uh, is a great step. Uh, in terms of uh, having a kernel that is more up to date than the 4.15 kernel that you're using by default. Um, now, if you want to take this a step further, you can use a tool called Uku, U-K-U-U, -U -U, um, and this gives you access to a lot more Linux kernels that you can uh, manage, install, and uninstall using a graphical tool. But the fact that Linux Mint actually has one built in now that can give you a slightly more up to date kernel is a great step. Uh, now, also the other complaint that I have about Linux Mint is the fact that the power management tools are a little bit basic at this stage. Uh, so when it comes to customizing what you want to do uh, with your uh, with your power management, uh, again, I'm running this in a virtual machine, so it's not going to present me with all the options that there are, which is completely fair. Um, but when it comes to the, I guess, the kernel modules that are being used, and also the the power management tools that they are present that they present you with when you're running on a laptop, are very basic. They're just kind of, um, you know, what do you want to do when you close the lid, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I would love to see some, uh, some, I guess, some more battery life enhancing tools uh, installed out of the box. That'd be great to see um, where it makes sense on a laptop. Again, you can remedy this by using things like uh, TLP, by installing a more up-to-date kernel, um, by looking at PowerTop and seeing how you can minimize your usage there. But again, these are just small considerations that a distribution like uh, Fedora has given a little bit more time and attention to uh, in, recent, in recent releases. Also, my only other criticisms would be that some of the software selections out of the box aren't the best. And Nick over at uh, Linux Experiment, he was talking about the fact that some of these uh, software selections are a little bit weird uh, or maybe a little bit antiquated compared to what we do um, or what most people do with their desktops nowadays. And uh, so that's a very small gripe. Finally, the only other things that I would really love to see in Cinnamon as a feature add would be universal search so that uh, so that you can search across your apps and settings and uh, and files with one simple search bar because at the moment it just searches your apps. So it'd be great to see universal search very similar to what you can find on KRunner and also on GNOME Shell's search. Um, and also there's no notification center. This may be to your liking, it might not be. For me personally, I find a notification center really helpful because I like to be able to turn off all notifications coming in so I can focus on what I'm doing and then go back and review what notifications have come in afterwards. GNOME Shell has a great implementation of this as do other uh, Linux desktops and desktop environments. Really, that's all my complaints about the Cinnamon desktop. So it is almost feature complete, but despite that, I still think it's one of the most uh, functional, robust, and feature complete desktops that you can get in 2019 out of the box. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful instead of being yet another Linux Mint review. Um, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see added to Cinnamon as a default feature. Uh, bearing in mind what they have now is a really great balance of minimal but yet feature rich. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Peace out ladies and gentlemen.